So we will start with general syntactic characteristics of JavaScript. So the first thing that we know is how to embed JavaScript in HTML pages. We already know to use a script tag, right? And we have already seen some examples of JavaScript embedding. And as we have discussed earlier, JavaScript can be embedded either in the head section or in the body section. And suppose that we are trying to embed JavaScript which is kept in some other file into our HTML page. So in that case, what we can do is we can use the script tag in this way. Okay, that is we can give the source attribute of the script tag to point to the JavaScript file where your script is written. And note that JavaScript files have the extension .js. Okay, then we can close the script tag. And another option is we can embed JavaScript directly in the body of HTML. Right, we have already seen that. So if you see here, this is one example of JavaScript embedded in body of HTML file. So the script tag opens over here and closes over here. And we can see that here, uh, JavaScript content is this one. That is document dot write hello, hello web programmers. So this is the JavaScript content but it is still enclosed within some other enclosing structure so that enclosing structure if you carefully observe is the HTML comments right so uh, this was the earlier method to enclose JavaScript or embed JavaScript in HTML pages because in the earlier web browsers uh, it was not a necessary thing like JavaScript support should be there or not all browsers supported JavaScript engines or programs capable of pro processing JavaScript. So what happens is if you don't include the executable JavaScript statements within the HTML comments, what happens is uh, the browser is not given an option to skip those lines. So those lines may be displayed as part of your HTML file if it is not interpreted as JavaScript. So if JavaScript is not supported in certain browsers, if you include, if you enclose the JavaScript lines uh, within the HTML comments, then what happens is uh, it will be treated as some command and it will not be shown on the HTML page. Okay, so in order to avoid uh, that is unintended effects of JavaScript in web browsers where JavaScript is not supported, it was earlier advised to keep JavaScript statements within HTML comments. Okay, so as per your textbook, once you open the script tag and close the script tag, whatever is in between, it should be enclosed in between another structure that is the HTML command. Okay, so always write your JavaScript code between HTML common statements which are enclosed within the script tag. Okay, so this is the first basic thing that we should take care of while we directly embed JavaScript in HTML pages, especially within the body. Okay, because what is whatever is written within the body will be rendered at, as it is or will be uh, interpreted by HTML engines, right? So, assuming that uh, we are trying to show this code to all the browsers, whether uh, this legacy type of browsers or the recent browsers, they should be embedded. The, HTML, the JavaScript should be embedded between HTML comments. Next thing is about JavaScript identifiers or how we can name variables in javascript okay so these are the basic rules that is just like in c c++ variable names or identifier names should start with letter underscore dollar sign and subsequently can be alphabets or digits and uh, one more thing javascript is really case sensitive so uh, a to z in caps as well as a to z in small will be interpreted as different so if you are going for identifier names in javascript if you see here, all these spell the same, that is for C, but they are written with different combination of uppercase and lowercase letters. So all these identifiers are different or distinct names. And one more thing, JavaScript reserves some keywords. So these are uh, the list of JavaScript keywords, so you won't be able to use them for identifier names. Moreover, some other keywords are also reserved by JavaScript, which we can find by going to this site, which is a standardization site for JavaScript, right? then there are portions for comments in javascript okay so single line comments can be given using double slash 
and a multi-line comments can be started with slash forward slash and star and terminated by a star and backslash so these are the basic things that we need to be take care while writing javascript so this portion was already covered that i to that is i have told you why we should enclose javascript clients with an html comments when you are embedding it in body and another main thing is uh, javascript statements that is a particular executable statement terminates by a semicolon okay so uh, if you are writing one statement per line that is not very important that you should terminate with a semicolon but suppose that you are having multiple statements with a single within a single line so in such a case you should definitely terminate that statement by semicolon because uh, javascript engine should not confuse uh, with this with line like that because if you see here uh, here one example of confusion is shown so return x and a semicolon is written over here and return uh, by chance happens to be in one line and x followed by semicolon happens to be in the next line so actually this is a single line that is we have to return the value x and the statement terminates with a semicolon so that is that is what is meant here but unfortunately the programmer wrote the things in two different lines so what a javascript tries to uh, do is or javascript engine tries to do is uh, whenever it sees state whenever it, it sees uh, probable statements in single lines it will try to reinsert semicolon on its own okay so here return is a possible keyword and it is a functional thing right so it is supposed to work it's a valid javascript keyword so javascript will try to run that statement by making it a valid statement by putting a semicolon at the end so the return x which happens to be single statement now is converted to two different statements that is return followed by semicolon and x followed by semicolon so what happens is uh, the second part that is you won't be able to see, reach the second part that is x semicolon because when a return is encountered at that point return to the original caller is initiated so x followed by colon is actually orphaned right so the intended effect is not produced so wherever possible when you are terminating a javascript statement always terminate it with a semicolon so that unambiguous situations won't arise.